Bullshare and welcome to Air Rider. My name is Ben. I'm here at BMW Motorrad uh, Joe Duffy in Dublin and I'm here to have a look at a few bikes. But first of all, uh, I just want to say the video isn't sponsored, but I do want to say thank you very much for Joe Duffy uh, BMW Motorrad for inviting me here to come and have a look at a few bikes. But um, we're going to just show you the dealership. This is the fantastic dealership here in Dublin. And they've got a nice little entry section here as well uh, with a few bikes outside. This is their dealership inside. Nice little clothing area and then they've got some bikes here as well. So if you're looking for a, a, a motorcycle, in particular BMW, be sure to come and check out the guys here. I've uh, bought my first bike from them many years ago and their service is very good. So if you're considering a BMW, definitely check out BMW uh, Joe Duffy Motorrad. How are we doing everyone? Uh, we're going to be taking a closer look at the F850 GS Adventure. This is the latest model that's currently available. The one behind me here is finished in triple black, uh, which is op uh, an option, but there are uh, an array of colors that you can order. But uh, we're going to be taking a look at the standard specification. Uh, we'll put, we'll start the bike as well. Uh, we'll have a look at some of the specification. Uh, this one has a few extras, which I'll go into a bit more detail. But we're going to start off by doing a 360 uh, view around the bike, and then we'll start off from the front and work our way to the back. Right, with that out the way, we're going to be taking a look at the headline uh, system. This this bike comes with a full LED uh, light kit, so it's got LED headlights and it's also got LED indicators. So I'm going to demonstrate them for you now, um, which will give you a better perspective on what the bike looks like with its lights on. Okay, so we have our LED indicators. I'm not sure what that'll look like on the, on the video. Sometimes um, they kind of flicker a bit. Uh, and we've got our daytime running light that we can see here, full LED headlamp. And then there's also the LED auxiliary lights, which come standard on this particular bike. So you've got the LED lights, uh, LED auxiliary lights, you've got the LED indicators, which form part of the standard equipment. Right, we'll take a look at the back here now. So we've got LED indicators on the back. We've got a full LED tail light as well. You might see that flickering a bit, but uh, that gives you an idea. I like the design on these. I've got the old fashioned LED um, headlamps um, from way back, but uh, they're very nice and sleek. I like that sort of indicator. It's obviously made to look like an arrow. Um, looks very nice. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, wheels. Um, so obviously they've done a major improvement over the over the F800 GS adventure. They've got the spokes on the outside of the wheels, which I think is fantastic. So what that means is you don't need to have a tube in the uh, in the tire anymore. And trust me, I'm going to be looking for something like this on my F800 uh, GS Adventure. And they've stuck with the same tyres. The Anarchy 3 are fantastic tyres. Um, and again, they've obviously kept with them. You've got a 21-inch front wheel on the Adventure as well. So very much suited uh, for your off-road. Uh, I know everyone tends to say, you know, bigger front wheel. Uh, it doesn't really suit the bike much when you're on road, but um, having the bike for the, for the, I've had the F800 GS Adventure for the last three years with the 21-inch wheel, haven't had any issues whatsoever. Um, we've also got ABS, which is standard. It's switchable, like uh, any, uh, like most of the GS bikes. So again, you can switch when you're going uh, off-road, you can obviously uh, uh, disable the ABS, which then gives you a little bit more, um, as I say, the ABS doesn't kick in when you're hitting the gravel, which is not what you want. But um, lovely, uh, lovely wheels. They've still still got the same spoke design. I do like the uh, the outer uh, edge here that now has the spokes going through. That's superb. And they've obviously gone for a tubeless wheel. Fantastic. Uh, the inverted forks as well carry over from the previous model. Again, just lovely. I like that particular look. You've got the um, instead of having the metal section here exposed, so the other way around. It looks very nice and clean. Um, 
The flare rings are superb as well. They've exaggerated the flare rings a bit more over the F800 GS, uh, the older model. Um, I like what they've done here. It looks very modern um, in, its line, in, in its design. They've pulled this line all the way down. It looks really nice. I quite like that. And again, you've also got the air vents there. Obviously, it's more probably more streamlined, lets the air flow out. Um, I do like that very much. We're moving on to the engine here. So this is a 95 brake horsepower engine. Um, and it's mated with a six-speed transmission. Um, again, the fuel consumption figures are very good. It's got a 23-litre fuel tank as per the Adventure model spec. So again, um, they've got the range to do it, which is fantastic. We've also got our, our usual foot pegs. They've got this little uh, the extender for the, for the rear brake, which I like, also on the F800 GS Adventure. And uh, it's, it's good to see that carry through. Nice wide foot pegs for standing up on. Uh, really nice on that. I like the exhaust, the stock exhaust that's on this particular one. You can see it there, it looks all superb. And again, you've got room there for your rear passengers. Luggage rack carries over from the F800 GS Adventure as well, which I just think is superb. So again, uh, that's that standard spec on the F800 GS Adventure. And then of course you can get the boxes to go with it as well uh, from the accessories. Looking at the rear, obviously you've got an aluminium swing arm um, as well. And then of course you've got the same uh, spoked uh, wheels there with the, the outer spokes on the side. Uh, again, also tubeless as well, which is fantastic. That is a major leap forward over the F800 GS. Um, it also means you don't have to carry uh, as much. I carry spare tubes um, in my top case as well because you never know what's going to happen. And the last thing you want is to get stuck on the side of the road. However, with tubeless tyres, super easy. Uh, you can repair on site and you can inflate the tyre and off you go. Really superb. I'm glad they've gone for that. Um, obviously your brake caliper single, you've got dual disc brakes on the front. And again, anarchy tyres. Your luggage rack at the back as well, standard on the uh, GS Adventure. Again, handy if you've got a top case on, you can put that on there as well. The seat, nice and comfy. If I know in the comfort seats from the previous G uh, GS Adventure model, these are going to super, super, super comfy. Obviously, chain drive. The F uh, the F series are all train uh, uh, chain driven. So obviously, with the with the 1200s, uh, their drive shaft. Um, so it's something that they've stuck to on the on, on the newer ones. Um, just one thing about the engine: it's an 853cc engine. But um, going back to that it's chain driver, they've got this little unit as well on the previous bike too. Obviously, it stops the uh, the muck flying everywhere when you've got your chain uh, greased up. Center stand, obviously very uh, very handy when you're doing maintenance on the bike, particularly doing your chains and changing tires. That's pretty much uh, there, no issues. Again, the foot pegs, uh, obviously that's your uh, gear change selector. Nice wide screen on the GS Adventures. And of course you've got the hand guards as well. Similar design as compared to the old one, so obviously you know they don't need to reinvent the wheel for that. If that works, that works, that's great. Uh, it really is a good looking bike. I mentioned uh, the uh, in relation to the torque on these are 92 uh, newton meters of torque. It's 83 on the previous bike. And one thing, the mid-range torque uh, on these bikes is just superb. Uh, and I dem demonstrated that on my uh, on my previous video on the F800 GS Adventure. Um, I'll put the link in the description if you want to check that out. But um, the bike itself really looks superb. I like what they've done. The styling looks good. Again, it's got that thoroughbred GS Adventure uh, detailing to it. And it's again, you've got the larger fuel tank. Uh, they've also changed the, the uh, where the fuel tank sits. If you know the, uh, the F800 GS Adventure that I have, the fuel tank is underneath the seat, hence why you don't have this little plastic section here anymore. They've gone back to its conventional space, which is up here. The optional equipment on this particular bike is the comfort package. And that includes the dynamic uh, ESA, which basically means you can pre-select uh, the suspension settings, normal, comfort um, and sport. It's also got keyless ride, so obviously with the keyless entry, I'll go and show you that shortly. And obviously the same standards part of that package. The touring pack gives you cruise control and a GPS prep, uh, basically. So 
So basically, if you, you're going to get a GPS navigation unit, it's already pre-wired for it as well. And the triple back is uh, an option on this particular bike. Right, uh, we're going to sit on the bike. Uh, we'll see what the seat height is like, um, sort of comfort-wise. And then the next bit, we'll have a look at the TFT uh, screen. Uh, and we'll also have a look at the controls on the handlebars. First of all, getting onto the bike um, seems a little bit lower than the other bike, uh, than my F800 GS. The reason being is I can sort of, it could just well be the same, but um, that's probably just me. But it does feel a little bit lower, but maybe that's... Uh, right, let's uh, take a seat on the bike and we'll have a look at some of the controls. So I mentioned that the about the seat height, um, it's actually a little bit lower than the, uh, the F800 GS Adventure. So um, they've got it to about 870. Um, in relation to 890 being on the other bike. So it's a little bit lower, hence why I said to you, it kind of feels about the same, but it does feel that little bit lower. So I was right about that, at least it is uh, lower. Also mentioned um, the fuel consumption on this bike is 4.2 liters per 100, which I think is superb. I think on the old F800 GS Adventure, they had it down to about 4.7. So again, an improvement over the previous one as well. And these are all Euro 5 uh, emission bikes. But uh, let's take a look. So I've got the the key here, obviously it does have a key as such, and that's to access the seat. Um, but let's take a look at some of the controls here. Okay, so we've got our normal switches on the left, which they've retained from the previous bike. So you've got Hooter, obviously that's your indicators, or auxiliary-like switches on the other bike that were slightly higher, but they're there, you know, it's irrelevant really. I think you're okay, that's obviously your main beam. You've got your cruise control settings are over here uh, for enabling it on and resume. Uh, that's your uh, ESA, your electronic suspension. Those are the different modes uh, that you can select. And obviously I showed that on my uh, F800 GS Adventure and you can select through the different drive modes. Uh, that's the navigation prep and that's the tier screen which they've replaced now. So there's no analog controls or analog um, dials on this particular bike. Another thing to notice is a USB for charging, the USB connector, which I think is great. So pop that down and you'll be able to access the USB from there. And it has the conventional, your 12 volts, uh, sorry, well, the battery connector there. And that's handy if you've got the BMW self-charge, or I wouldn't say self-charge, uh, but the BMW charging for the for the battery, it sits in there. It's a great system. I've got it. Man, it's hassle-free. Put it in, connect it up, and it charges the battery if, obviously, you're not using the bike for a while. Um, so that's a, a great feature there. And then on the right here, we've got engine start, uh, heater grips, our heater grips are over here and your mode for your different drive modes obviously this has the rain and uh, the road the road and rain settings so obviously you can select that uh, there is the switch for the keyless so we're going to select that now so obviously if you have the key in your pocket somewhere obviously then you can just put it in start get on the bike and off you go there's the tft screen it's just obviously come up with saying that the fuel tank uh, level is uh, or the tank reserve level is reached uh, right to the next filling station, but obviously we can see on the controls here. Um, I'm going to just hand this round. So what we have is we've got our what gear we're currently in, which we're, we're in neutral. Those are your standard um, flashes, so ABS and the little uh, triangle there. When you get going, they'll go out, same as all uh, the majority of all BMWs. Fuel tank range is over there, your speed digital, and obviously your temperature is located there as well. And obviously automatic headlights on all the bikes, so that's handy enough. And then your different modes, as I select this button on the right here, you'll see it says Enduro, Rain, Road, Dynamic. So that's the, uh, the, the, driving, the driving modes that you can select. Quite different to electronic suspension, uh, by pressing that, you've got there, it says um, interior riding mode, dampener not adjustable, that's fine. But you can select it there, uh, obviously when the bike starts. We're going to start the bike up in a sec as well, just so you can hear what the engine sound is like, um, which I will do shortly. But uh, the screen looks great. It kind of looks like it's an adjustable screen as well, which is great. That's something, something new, instead of just having a fixed screen. I like that. Very nice. Uh, they've retained the same mirrors, so again, obviously technology-wise, if something if something works, 
uh, again they'll carry it through and that's exactly what they've done the old mirrors from the old F800 uh, GS Adventure carry over as well What's nice about keeping the controls the same, it means that whenever there's a new bike, they've always got the same controls in the same places, so you can adjust very easily when you're going to a new bike. So again, that's something nice that uh, that, that that is good to see uh, carry on through. Again, if it works, why replace it? Anyway, let's get the bike started. We've got the bike in neutral, and we're going to start it here. That is one seriously loud startup, but nice. I think it'll probably uh, it'll probably cool down shortly. Right, so what did you think of the uh, F850 GS Adventure? Uh, I hope I've given you a bit of information about the bike. Um, I'll put as much detail in the description as possible, so be sure to check that out. I'll also put a link uh, to uh, BMW uh, Joe Duffy Motorrad site as well, which you'll find in the description. But uh, there it is, the F850 GS Adventure. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now.